How many podcasts have we done? I think this is the fifth one. Oh, I told Joanne maybe three or four. <laughs> I've lost track. In this crazy world, everything is upside down and my mom has lost track. But you know what? Even my mom has a podcast. Hi, I'm Vaughn Fry, and joining me is... Mom. Hey, she's talking into the mic. That's great. It's about time that started happening, right? So, we have a, a little bit of a different show for you guys. We want, first of all... Before we really kick into high gear here, I want to get a drink and I've got something kind of neat here. So I've got a 14 quart personal cooler from Pelican that I got on sale and it's available right now on Amazon for just under $90. If you don't mind getting a white one, I got a tan one. I'm going to pick this up right here and this is going to be a bit of a juggling trick, but here goes. Okay, so it's got a... I'm gonna call this a root beer bottle catch. Root Magnetic. beer. Yes. Or like a beer so bottle catch. We're gonna we're gonna try to open this root beer. Pop the top. Watch this. Watch this. Here goes. Or, I mean, listen. <gasps> and that didn't go as planned. Yes. All right. Get get me some napkin. There's some napkins over here. <laughs> Just get. Got a little bit on my. Don't throw that at the audio equipment. You're gonna have to edit that. Now, now I've, I mean, it's, oh, geez. Just start over. No, we're not starting over. You never start over. That's not the way the pros. Well, he, he the, needs a bib. <laughs> okay, so that's what happens when you try to use the magnetic bottle catch with one hand, and it's like you're offhand in a way, but, um, Looks like he dribbled a little bit on his shirt and all over his, um, what's that called? Well, it's all over my, I guess you could call this the mixer. But yeah, mom went to a movie this afternoon and I think she wants to tell you about that. What did you see? I got to see The Little Mermaid with oh. Hallie Bailey. And do you know how movie reviews work? You want to like... Talk about it. Well, I really enjoyed it. I, I would recommend everybody go see it. Um, although I, it had some really good points and some really, one scene was pretty scary. So I will tell people if you've got younger children or old ladies like me that are sensitive to things that might bother them a little bit. Um, like I said, it actually kind, it kind of had a scene in it that was too scary for the exorcist. So, you know, that tells you anything. What do you mean too scary for the exorcist? There was an exorcist in it and they got scared? What do you no, mean? No, it was it was cut from the exorcist. A scene that was cut from the exorcist. Yes, Megan McCarthy's it, scene made reminded me of a scene that was cut from the exorcist. Did she like walk down some stairs backwards and then you, I'm not going to spoil people? it. I'm just telling you it's scary and get me prepared for that. So tell us about the movie. Who you said it stars Halle Bailey. Who yeah, is she? and then what as she? soon as the movie's over with, my really this isn't the direction to take a movie review. Okay, start with the beginning. What's it about? Who who's in it? Who plays what? Okay, say that. You can tell that Vaughn's the expert movie reviewer. I'm obviously not. Uh, I don't even read movie reviews, but I think he's very good at writing them. So now I'm going to try and do a mom version here. Okay. The Little Mermaid is based on a Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale written in 1837. So it's definitely stood up to time. It's an age-old tale of youth wanting to travel and explore and find um, new adventures in the world. And you have to leave your parents, of course. That's par how part of life. And so that's basically what it's about. Um, it was very sensitive, very good. I think... Um, my friend and I both were in tears at the end. Maybe that's because we're moms and we've been through okay, this. Okay, so look, it's called The Little Mermaid. Right. There's a little mermaid. She does what? She meets who? What happens? Okay, The Little Mermaid uh, meets a guy, and um, he's the, he's a prince or a future king, and um, she saves him, and she sings. See, all he remembers is that she had a beautiful voice and that she could sing. Well, she wants to go see him, and she wants so she makes a deal with um, Melissa McCarthy's uh, character, 
Ursula, Ursula, Ursula and <laughs> Ursula. Ursula and she is a and she is a sea witch and and but the deal is she can't have a voice. She can have legs and be human, but she can't have a voice. So she can't sing. So he doesn't know that it's her. So that's just really interesting. And then so um, it all works out. I tell you, my favorite character in the whole movie was um, Aquavina's character, the bird or the seagull. That was awesome. She did a great job. I recognized her voice right away. And uh, Javier um, Bardem did a really good job, too, as the father, King Triton. So I really enjoyed the movie. I'd recommend it. I'd give it a, I don't know, hands, hands up. A <laughs> thumbs up. up. Thumbs, thumbs up, up, yes. Okay. Uh, so... What were the songs like? Were the songs this is what they call a live action remake of a right. Disney animated. animated classic from nineteen eighty nine, but they did some of the same songs, right? And they yeah, had some new ones, they I'm did. sure. Right? I thought it was really good. Um Kiss the Girl was pretty good. Um oh the guy that played the crab also did a really good job. But um his name is David Diggs. He was funny. And uh, I think Haley ba- Bailey sings wonderful. But the funny thing that happened is the movie, the credits come on. And, of course, my friend and I are both reading it. And we read Haley ba- Bailey is um, Halle Berry. Halle Berry. And we're both going, was she in this movie? <laughs> so, both of you unilaterally <laughs> decided. Yes, so that means you're other. not the only ones doing that. Yeah. So that's what I said. Well, I don't know. I don't know what she could have been. And I said, well, is that, isn't that the girl's name that's the lead character? Ariel, we couldn't figure that one out. So anyway, just let you know, that was kind of a funny old um, lady moment there. Funny old lady moments. Yeah, I got but got to get used to those. Oh, yeah, you're going to have more of those, I'm sure. I have lots of those. <laughs> so we also, in as far as personal news, you, you finally got your camper. Our Lance. Yes. Travel trailer. Travel yes. trailer. They go by Lance Campers on Instagram. I tagged them when I showed a picture of you with your Lance hat in front of it and all that. And uh, we It has been Christianed what right, What name? Little Squirt. Little Squirt. I've, and I'm ordering you a decal to put on the back. I haven't seen it yet, so I guess I'm going to be surprised. Well, it looks, it's just white text and it looks like the Sprite Is font. it like green? Yeah, I said white. I mean, what color is the Squirt? There is nothing. It just says a little squirt in white. Oh, I thought letters. I was going to have a squirt character. The, okay, so I was looking for some stuff, and okay. I guess there is a character called Squirt from, like, Finding Dory. Uh-huh. Is that the name of it? The Finding Nemo 2 Dory something? We'll have to look at that one. And he's a sea turtle, and his name's Oh, that squirt. would be cute. So might be able to get, like, a fat head of that. Maybe. I don't know. We'll have to look and see. I looked for Sonic the Hedgehog stuff. They don't have those on Fat Head anymore. And the two, you at one point, you wanted Link from The Legend of Zelda. And they only have two Links, and it is not the coolest looking Because I thought of instead of Link, I thought he was saying it was Lance, and I thought that'd be perfect. But, oh, well. All right. So you want to maybe get into the news a little bit? Sure. I. Uh, I have a few news stories. I have a few, too. Oh, you think you do? Yeah, you go first. Okay. So, uh, first of all, Elizabeth Holmes, life in prison. Not life. How long? What her life in prison is like. And she's, like, walking in, you know. She is going for, I think they said 11-year sentence, so I think she'll be out in two. You know how it works for white women. Right, right. I thought it was 18 months or something like that. Yeah, like... Wasn't there, wasn't there an actress that's supposed to get a year for paying the wrong people to get her kids into a school, but yeah. she went for like a week, like two weeks, and it was like Lori Laughlin had that issue. I think one of the Desperate Housewives, similar situation. Yes. Yep. But they didn't go nearly as long as they were said to, to go. So uh, she holds a job where she makes 12 cents an hour. What is she doing? Um, I'm not really sure. But she shares bathing facilities in the prison camp in South Texas. And, and she I, has three roommates, it looks like. It looks like there's 600 women offenders there. I'm not sure what the, you know, it's it's, not, it's no super max, I don't believe. It's probably pretty low security would be my guess, right? Probably. She's probably not in there with any murders or anything. Mass murderers or anything like that? Well, probably not mass murderers, no. Mur- murderers, probably. They're probably like, um, what are they called? 
um, blue co- no white collar crimes or something like that. Yeah, white collar criminals probably. So that's what her life is like now. That twelve cents an hour. I think that's the future. That's how you get uh, manufacturing back in America. You just have prisoners do it. So you and just, we might come to that. I that think and AI. The AI is going to determine who needs to go to jail and build cabinets. And, there you go. And vehicles. Yep. And that's where Teslas are going to be made. I, Who's I'm not be the even joking. Director. That's going to be Who's going to be the daycare givers or child care givers? Some, they're going, the AI is going to determine what child care giver to put in jail to run the daycare at the, at the prison state. Oh. That's the, way, that's the way things are going. Now, do you want to do a story or do you want me to do another story? Okay, so NASA came out today talking about the UFOs. Did you hear anything about no, that? No, I didn't, no. All I heard was, we haven't found any yet. <laughs> that makes you feel real secure, doesn't it? By yeah, found, but we're still you mean, looking. Are we looking for like a crashed UFO? What do they mean I by found? I don't know. All I heard was, we're still looking. And so they have, they have evidence, but they're just saying they're looking further. I don't know if they have evidence. I think people, I mean, you know, air, U.S. Air pilots have found, U.S. Air Force pilots have seen things and stuff. But I don't know. Okay, here's another story for you. Al Pacino's girlfriend, whose name I can't pronounce, eight months pregnant. He's 82. She's 29. I'm telling you, she could have went with a in vitro. No, what's it called? Yeah, a, a donor, sperm donor. But hey, she got rich and a baby. And she's got good. He's got good genes, you know. So hey. in theory, she doesn't have to put up with him for very long. Right. She I might mean, have we to can put assume, up with him, right? But- she may not put up with him at all. Who knows? Let's say she's got 10 years of being annoyed by him, but she could collect some pretty good dough accordingly, right? Uh, what do you think about that age gap? Oh, he seems pretty spry. <laughs> I saw him on TV He this looks week. insane, is what he looks like to me. He just looks like an insane... And he, it, it, oh, eventually, all the old white guys end up looking like the insane old white guy, really. Insane. And In, the insane. They're oh, the same insane. and they're insane at the same time. Yes. <laughs> well, he has a head full of hair. I don't know if I'd call that full. I think he's growing it out to keep the mystique that it looks full. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, do you have another story? Uh, what else is I going to talk to you about? Oh, Amazon got in trouble. Ring camera and Alexa. Did you hear about that? No, but you were talking about before the podcast, I said save it for the podcast. So what is it? Okay, well, apparently they got, um, we're keeping, we're keeping uh, voices and information. And I guess they really had a problem because they were keeping children's voices and information and video. And so I don't know all the details, but they're having to pay um, customers back. A lot of this, uh, so that'd be Alexis. Now, I'm not sure about the ring component of that. Uh, yeah, I, I think that, that's what they said. Both. I them. guess it probably has a camera and microphone to, to yeah. do that. But a lot of those sort of smart devices, they record things and they keep the information. Oh, but don't worry. We we don't share it. it. They put it like, oh, but we don't. How do they say this? We don't we don't record it for that long. We, we erase it after a month or something like that. Well, they didn't. <laughs> and I guess, yeah, you know, people could use that against you in some way. I mean, I, from you know a few years ago, you think, ah, oh, well, what's that going to do, really? But now it's like, okay, clearly that's something to sell. They but, sell sell what you're interested in to people to market to you, right? Right. Possibly. But it kind of makes me sad because we don't have either one, so we're not going to get any money. <laughs> that's kind of a bummer. Oh, you wanted the you wanted the lawsuit money. Yeah, we're not getting. We don't have. I've either never one, gotten so. much out of that. Now those Vibram you usually five get a dollar finger, or something like that. Remember those Vibram five finger shoes? Yes, that, I, I that you wear, just had to have. I wear when I work out, and I got like a settlement from them where basically they paid you back for a pair. Well, that they're pretty expensive. That's pretty good. That's better than some settlements you get. Yeah, most of them. I think it's like twenty bucks. Hey, we if you're lucky, we let your your identity get stolen, and uh, and every you know bank in America is wanting your your information. But don't worry, we gave you a year of life lock. Like that's usually what happens. So that's wonderful. Another story for you. I don't think you know about this one. Ooh. Shannon Sharp is leaving Skip Bayless in Undisputed in buyout. Oh, why? It looks like there's been some kind of agreement where I guess Fox Sports won, the, you know, who has their show Undisputed, Skip and Shannon. 
They are buying out his contract. Skip. Yeah. Skip. <laughs> They're buying out his contract, and it looks like he's probably going to go to ESPN, which would probably place him on the competition show first take. So who's going to be with Skip? What do you mean, who's going to be with Skip? If Shannon's on leaving, yeah. Here's the thing. The show, at present, it would appear is going to go on until the NBA Finals are over. Which is pretty soon, right? Um, I mean, it depends on how quick the Denver Nuggets get this wrapped up. Win because it. I'm assuming the Denver Nuggets win. They're a heavy favorite. By game three, Tyler, Tyler Hero, yes, his name is Tyler, like your son. Good name. He might return for the Heat and maybe make a series of it, prolonging Skip and Shannon's uh, show. Now, a few weeks back, maybe a couple months, whatever, there was a huge argument on Undisputed between uh, Shannon and Skip about Tom Brady, and it's like, oh, you're, you're so disrespectful to him. Like, I have three Super Bowls. Why you act like I'm chopped liver and all this? And, and he took his glasses off. It looked like they were going to come to blows, which might not have worked out very well for Skip Bayless, being the frail old guy and the other guy being a three-time Super Bowl champion. So they, that looked like... The show was going to be done. It was just a matter of time. And this looks like the nearest time that this could get to be the case. They had a fist bump today, but it was like an inch away. They could, didn't quite reach on the fist bump. Did they blow it up or did they just... No, they didn't explode the fist bump. <laughs> I don't think they ever do that. Okay. But yeah, the show is coming to an end. I'm assuming that Fox Sports 1 will get somebody in-house promoted up to be against Skip Bayless. Uh, in a new dispute show, maybe still call undisputed, undisputed, skip in some guy named Michael, you know, something like that. Some guy named Vaughn. No. Okay. Skip wants, Sh skip put Shane in there because he thinks this guy's dumb. I can beat him in every argument. The arguments and he can't, the arguments will always be set up so that skip is the boss. Basically he decides which side he wants. The opposition takes the other side regardless. Now, Unfortunate for Skip, he's frequently wrong about everything. So but this, he admits it. It makes it kind of makes whoever sits there gets to be a bit more famous. Like I think Skip, in a way, made Stephen A. Smith. You remember Stephen A. Smith, right? Yeah, he's pretty famous now. So the maybe, tenacity. Yeah, you have the liquefaction. That's pretty. I'm good. not going to take it. He's a bad man, but for you. To say these things about that grown man, LeBron, to have the, I, I can't quite do it all the time, but you know, Shannon, he's like, now skip, 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 no, no, skip. You think he's saying chip, which is great. <laughs> so you're always just like sitting. Always going chip, chip. Yeah, I'm like, what is that about? It's so That's weird. It's from the decorating channel. That, what's it called? She, yell, she yells at her son, her, no, her husband, chip. Right. Yeah. Magnolia Farms. Yeah. I'll never understand that. They have a cow head for a logo. It's called Magnolia Farms. Not a farm. They don't. It, not They're anything not to do with cows. They sell and fix houses. Right. Well, I think they have some cows and maybe horses now. So I have no what idea. What, Sheep, something something. That'd be like if we called our podcast Ice Cube Trays and we had a logo of a lightsaber just to confuse people. Just right? to confuse people. I think that's how that'd go. Now, do you have any other news stories? Uh, oh, I was going to say, by the way, the, the actor that plays Prince Eric, Jonah Haverking, ho, ho, I don't know how to say his last name for sure. He's really a cutie. I think he's going to get really popular with all the young girls. He's got quite, he's got really cute dimples in his cheeks. Did, did he have to sing? He did sing. He did pretty good, too. So how long was the movie? Because I think the original like it was pretty short. I think it was pretty long, but it, didn't, it was very good. We, wa we watched it in 3D, and then the 3D was really good. All right. Well, that's good. Um, I want to show you a YouTube video, okay? You okay. think you can handle that? Maybe. Now, I, I think I've shown you a little bit of this guy before. His name's Brad Hall, and he talks about shoes. This guy is the... This guy... The, he's the Napoleon Dynamite of shoes on YouTube. And I, I'm just, I think it's great. He had a I new video. Like, oh, gosh. It's a, most anticipated shoe release of the year. You can talk over this if Michael you want. 
Air Jordan 1. These are, these are some Air Jordan 1 shoes made to look like they were lost in 1985. Well, the box looks like it was original. It's kind of cool. Stay tuned. Are they really old Air Jordans? No, they're brand new. I early access on the sneakers app for this pair. I guess I was lucky enough to lose out on at least 20. You have to lose 20 raffles in order to be eligible to get the raffle on this. And he lost 20, he's saying. He said he got lucky enough to lose 20 times. It comes with kind of a hook. Nike's idea was basically that this shoe was lost in a stock room for decades and it was just discovered. That's why you can see there's this aged effect going on on the box. There's also going to be some aging on the shoe. How I much do they the cost? Idea of finding new interesting ways to sell what were, How much were I Air don't Jordans? remember. Air, they started out like $65. And that was a lot of money. Man, we were going, there's no way you're going to get $60 tennis shoes. The warehouse, it had a and then they got okay, some. Okay, so he's thinking of other backstories. Or maybe there was a flood in the warehouse. Or <laughs> he's so hilarious. They could draw on some mold. Yeah. Who's that thing in the background? Is that supposed to be him in a yeah. yellow shirt? Listen. Got really jealous of the store owner because the store owner was married to. <laughs> is he? Is this an act? And is he like a comedian? No one really knows. I think it is. Deal with that. So he used his power in a very. Very corrupt way. Okay, I've seen it now. No, you haven't. After he shut down the store, he threw out all of the store's inventory. He threw it into the dumpster behind the store. And he set it on fire. Person, they thought an abandoned store, it's not going to produce any garbage. I don't have to pick it up. So this shoe has been sitting in a dumpster. For down decades. by the river. So it's got a little bit of garbage on it. The possibilities are just. Endless. I think it's hilarious that he's okay. he's come up with this backstory okay. for a shoe. The shoes have backstories now. How about that? Okay, sounds funny. All right, I got. I've got a quote for you. See okay, if this is, so if you can figure out the this plan quote. is to give a quote and then I have to guess who it is yes. in an attempt to stump me. This is almost impossible to do, and yet I was able to do it the first try. And, and so now, yeah, this is typical Vaughn. But I have a hundred percent record. Why should I do it again? I'm, you know, he doesn't want to take a chance of failing. Okay. Yeah. The point is, I can only lose going forward. But you're gonna win. Okay. Here's the quote: "Strength does not come from winning." The hell is that? That could be anybody. You don't know it. Strength doesn't come from winning. Give it a good guess. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yep. That's right. I'm am only saying that because I'm thinking what would mo who would mom look up a quote from? Not that mom looked for a quote, but she looked for a quote from someone in particular that he, that he's fond of or he thinks. And fond of, and so. it mentioned strength there, and so I thought, okay, good. I, I can okay. see what mom's Two, doing. No, good. good we record. can retire that bit right there. No, with no, me we're going to completely we're, we're undefeated. Keep going. I think so. No. I, I think that that's a good place to let us know if you want me to continue to give him some quotes. Have you watched anything on streaming or anything? Yeah, well, we've been watching a lot on of TV. YouTube. <laughs> you saw a little bit of American Idol. They had a winner the other day. They, all the, everything's had their season finales and all that, right? Yeah. You know, they're actually getting rid of some shows, like rid of, totally erasing them on Disney Plus in an effort to save money. They actually got rid of that Mighty Ducks Game Changers that we watched. There was a similar basketball show. And there's an older uh, superhero sort of show that used to be on Hulu. They didn't just cancel them. They removed them from the platform. That's sad. So it's completely impossible to watch Mighty Ducks Game Changers. You were really into that. Well, I watched every episode. I wasn't really into it. But I did notice that I think the main kid from that, he's in something else coming up. So it's not like they had to go out and, you know, kill the kids that were involved. They get opportunities later. It's just now no one can ever watch what they did. It's almost like the Disney vault. Remember that? So one of the shows that got canceled was the Willow continuation based on the, I think, 1988 movie Willow. And it was really, really awful. But the, the guy who created the Willow show said it's kind of cool that it's been removed from the site because it's like the Disney vault. Well, you know, maybe it's going to be a thing. Hey, we got removed, <laughs> you know, like street cred. Street cred, we got, <laughs> we were too hot for Disney Plus. We, we got, got removed. removed. 
It's really an issue of if they kept it on there, they'd have to keep paying like the writers of the show and the producers and stuff. They'd keep getting money even though they're not really doing anything with it. Like, you know, Seinfeld makes a lot of money for NBC, but once it's not airing anymore, they don't keep paying Jerry Seinfeld for it, right? Right. So I think Netflix is going to be doing this next too. HBO started this trend. Disney's doing it. And I think we will see shows leaving Netflix. Like Netflix original shows completely lost to time. Not available on DVD, nowhere, just poof, vanish. But surely they're keeping some record of it so they can go to the vaults. You think they got them downloaded on a hard drive, and but they're just not putting them on the service? Maybe they're in the salt mines here in Kansas. You know, they have movies down there. That's for film. Film okay. to preserve the film. You don't move the hard drive to the salt mine to preserve the hard drive. You don't. How do you preserve hard drives? You just don't destroy it. Okay, well, they're not destroyed. Well, you got to transfer the data before that drive gets too old. They also have these solid state to the drives. Cloud. <laughs> we record this on a, a card, and it's a solid state thing. And it's tiny, and it doesn't have any moving parts. I'm, and it seems kind of magical to me. I'm not really sure how it works exactly, but you can only use them so many times, like 100,000 times. And so then they're saving work every one of ours? No, not really. I mean, we upload it to Audio Boom which is the, the service we use, and it distributes to Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And I don't have to keep that anywhere. It, they've kind of got it. But I guess if they had a problem, then you, your podcast would be lost for, to time, like a Disney Plus series that people didn't watch. Then we'd have street cred. Is that what you think? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You oh, know, I have another idea. What? Okay. Uh, airplane seats have been in the news lately. And I, th- I think... There should have a thing like it kind of like, okay, you get the really nice, comfortable seats if you're well behaved. You act up on the airplane, you go to the back where they're just squeezed in there. And I think people would behave better on airplanes. The airplane should be like the elementary school bus. That's what I was thinking. Go to the go to there the head of the be class, a go to the back of the class. Observing, you know, looking over everybody, walking the halls, right? And you have to see you have to see. You have to go to time out you if you're bad. Yeah, well, that's a cage. (laughs) Definitely the troublemaking would be in the back yeah, because that's far from the uh, authority figure in a sense, right? Well, yeah, but, you know, you got in trouble and they brought you up by right underneath the teacher. I mean, that was really humiliating if you had to go and sit right next to the teacher's desk. Well, not (laughs) Not that I ever did. Okay, but. Or chair or whatever. So what airline's doing that? I don't. I said that was my idea. Okay, well. And this, so it's not a news thing. It's It's a you had an idea. Yeah, mom's idea. Well, I had an idea too. I was thinking we need an invention, and maybe you can use AI and your smartphone to do this. Maybe there's already something like this to perfectly level your sideburns, (laughs) so you have you know the symmetry, right? Because that's not easy to do. Why don't you invent it? I don't know how to invent it. You get this little leveler and you put it on your nose. (laughs) You think you put like some kind of ruler that fits your face it's on across your, nose. your eyes? It fits on your nose and goes out to your sideburns. So it's like it has to it's be like a yardstick because some guys wear a yardstick that kind of molds to your face, yeah. and then goes across. Yeah, but then you have to adjust something down. But it and has click a, you know how spots. levelers have a little thing that floats in there. You have that, and that's how the you get little them thing's straight. called a bubble. You have a bubble. You have to get it straight. I think your face is probably straight enough that you if you. If your face if your face wasn't straight, but your uh, your sideburns were, it would look off. So you need everything level with your eyes and your in your nose in a way. I think the yardstick that goes across your face, possibly that could work. There could be a way to mold that. I'm so smart. But everybody would have a different you know yardstick for that. It'd be kind of difficult to do. Well, you, it almost have to be a strap across the back of your head to hold it even, kind of like those braces that like on. Um, Sweet 16, what was that 16 movie where the guy had to, had the headgear he wore? What are you talking about? That movie. What's Who's it in it? Um, Molly Ringwald. Oh, okay. Uh, a head, 16 a Candles. Headgear, head gear, I think that's what it's called. 16 Candles. And the guy in there had a headgear on. So you could have kind of a strap that goes around to your leveler on your nose <laughs> for your sideburns. <laughs> All right. Well, at least you're more talkative. Maybe the movie... You having to be quiet for an hour and a half or so caused you to 
combust with energy for the podcast today. Well, I really enjoyed the movie. It was fun. All right. You will be out this next week. You're going to have a little adventure with your mother-in-law. So we're going to have to film or, well, shoot something beforehand, like a sort of bonus episode to to give everybody while you're away. I was thinking we'll take a, a short little tour of your RV. What do you think of that? That sounds like fun. All right. Well, I guess uh, that's going to do it for this week. Bye-bye now. 